Howdy gang, in today's very specific episode of Pool School, I'm going to answer a question that I seem to keep getting, and that is on how to balance or stabilize a Zodiac Barracuda G3 or a Zodiac Barracuda G2, which has been discontinued, but it still applies. So if you don't own one of those vacuums, you probably don't need to watch this, but if you do, this one's for you. Alrighty, before we get started, I want to once again thank you for watching this video, remind you to like this video if you do by clicking that little thumbs up icon below this video, subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already, and please feel free to share this channel with everyone you know who owns a pool. Okay, so one more thing really quick, I want to announce my newest project. It is called PoolSchooler.com, PoolSchooler.com, I'll put a link to that website in the description of this video below. But PoolSchooler.com is kind of the next step or next phrase of Pool School. Um, I've been getting so busy and so inundated with emails, it's getting hard to answer every one of them. So I came up with this program that gives people exclusive content and content that you can't get on the YouTube channel, plus access to me more personally so that I can help you with your pool service needs. Anyway, check that website out. I'm not gonna go into a big spiel on marketing it and trying to pitch you and commercialize everything on you. Check it out, poolschooler.com. There'll be a link in the description below this video. Okay, so you are a pool owner. You have a stay in the pool suction side vacuum called the Zodiac Barracuda G3 or Zodiac Barracuda G2. Now the G2 has been discontinued, but people still have them and there's still parts available online for them. It's still, in my opinion, one of the best vacuums on the market, but since it's been discontinued, um, to me, hands down, the best vacuum on the market is, for the money, is the Zodiac Barracuda G3. If you haven't seen my video on that, I'll put a link in the description below this video as well so you can check out why I think the Barracuda G3 is the best vacuum on the market for the money. Okay, remember that, for the money, all right? But I've had some subscribers email me and ask me, hey, my, my vacuum doesn't sit flat on the, on the bottom of the pool. It tilts this way or this way. How do I get it to sit flat? So there are really two reasons or two issues that can go on when it comes to your Barracuda, either G3 or G2, so I'm using that interchangeably, okay? That cause, can cause it to not sit flat on the bottom of the pool. The first one is a suction issue, and there's a lot of reasons suction can be affected by your to your pool vacuum. And if you haven't seen my video on understanding the suction side of your pool, it'd be a really good idea to check that video out. But there are a few reasons why the suction can be affected to your vacuum. So I'm gonna address that first. The second one is basically a balance or a weight and balance thing on the, va the vacuum itself and the hoses. And we'll go into that second one, that one's pretty simple. But suffice it to say that it could be a combination of either one of those two, either a balance issue or a suction issue or a combination of the two. So I just wanna let you know right up front about that so that you know we're gonna do a little playing to get it to, to work just right. But let's first start out with the suction side and figure out if there's something wrong with your suction first. Hey gang, I wanted to really quickly tell you why it's important to eliminate the suction potential issue out of the equation of balancing out your pool vacuum. The reason is a suction issue can be more than just affecting the vacuum itself, okay? A suction issue can affect how your entire pool system performs and it can grossly hinder and limit the effectiveness and efficiency of your entire pool system, okay? And not to mention, because it may be a restricted flow issue, it can increase the wear and tear on your system so that your system wears out prematurely. So get that suction issue eliminate or at least eliminate the possibility of it from the equation, then once you do that and you, if you have good suction and everything, then you can deal with the weight and balance issue of the vacuum. Okay? All right. Alrighty, I am at one of my client's pools and as you can tell, they have a Barracuda G3 right there in their pool. So we're talking about suction first. Again, if, you're, if, you're, if your vacuum is not sitting flat on the bottom of the, of the pool, then when it's running, then there's something either in the suction or in the weight or balance of the vacuum itself, which we can go into later. So here's the suction side of the pool. Notice there's two pipes. This one is for the vacuum. I know that because I have the majority of the suction to that. And then there is the um, 
skimmer side. All right. And typically when you have a vacuum, a pool vacuum, you usually set your valve, your suction valve to where two thirds of the suction to three quarters of the suction are to the vacuum. You notice that little notch there. Those little notches kind of help me know that's where they normally are. And then the rest of that suction goes to the skimmer. Okay. So that's really it. Now you can play around with this thing and and adjust this so when you fire it up you can play around with this valve maybe increase it decrease it and see if that takes care of it now one of the things i tell people is when you fire it up then go to your vacuum and just disconnect one of the lengths of the hoses or take the vacuum and disconnect the hose from the actual vacuum and feel the suction on the hose if there's plenty of suction there then it's probably a weight issue but if not we got to go to our next possibility okay one of the possibilities okay so the first one again number one is make sure that your suction to your vacuum is where it should be which is about two-thirds to three-quarters dedicated to the vacuum on the suction side okay okay number two if you've got that and that there's still no plenty there's still not a lot of suction then this may sound obvious open up your pump basket make sure that there's no way or open up your pump lid make sure there's no way that the pump is going to turn on because you want to be careful you don't want to get hurt and empty your pump basket because sometimes I've, I've seen numerous times somebody contacts me a friend says hey Kenny my pool's not my, my vacuum's not working anymore can you get me a new vacuum I go over there and their entire pump basket is totally full and impacted and that's going to reflect Reef, re, reflect. It's going to restrict the flow of suction and to your pool. So you want to make sure that your flow is not restricted. Remember, I talked about unrestricted flow being very critical to the proper operation of your pool. Okay. Now, if the, once you've emptied this, again, making sure that nothing is the pump is not going to turn on. You might want to check inside here behind this pump, behind the basket, or underneath the basket, in this area right here. Okay is the impeller and you want to make sure that your impeller is clear sometimes a clogged impeller can affect the suction as well okay so we're going through a, a system right first check your suction valve second empty your pump basket third while you're emptying your pump basket making sure the pump will not turn on check your impeller inside there if you've not seen my video on how to uh, clean an impeller uh, i'll put a link to that one below as well and i'll put one to the I'll put one also about how to empty a pump basket as well. Okay, so I'll put those videos in there so we don't have to go over those now. All right, if all of those things are where they're supposed to be, okay, then you want to check your filter medium. All right, especially if it's a DE or cartridge filter, a really, really dirty or really, really dirty um, DE filter or cartridge filter can restrict flow through it and thus it can restrict the suction. Usually, when that happens, if you look at your pressure gauge, your pressure gauge will be really high. I'm gonna fire this up really quick. It might get really noisy, but I want you to see the pressure of this vacuum, I mean, of this system. So that's where the pressure is, and this is a sand filter. I'm gonna turn it off. I'm gonna turn it off so you can hear me. This is a sand filter. So that's where this one's pressure is. Now, yours is may, may, may vary, but you should be able to know if the pressure is really, really high, chances are your filter medium, whether it's sand, DE, or cartridge, needs to be clean. So I'm gonna put videos to all of that stuff in the description below, one on how to backwash and recharge a DE filter, one on how to backwash a sand filter, and then I have three model-specific cartridge filter cleaning videos that I'll put down below as well in the description as well okay so that is the suction side or the, the equipment side of your system if there's a problem okay again first check your suction valves make sure the majority is to the vacuum second empty the pump basket and clear the impeller third make sure your filter medium is clean all right now if you still don't have very good suction to your vacuum there is a remote possibility that your vacuum line or the suction line for that could be clogged. In that case, you're probably gonna to wanna to get a professional to come out and they, use, they can use a high pressure air nozzle and actually blow those lines out and that could help clear it up, clear it up, all right? Again, this is somewhat of a troubleshooting sleuthing. There's one other thing that sometimes happens and it's back at the, at the system. Sometimes a piece of debris or a big enough piece of chunk of something gets stuck inside the valve here. 
in which case you might want to call a professional, have them come out and check that too. Okay. This again is after you've gone through all this, you save your money. Don't waste your time on a professional and your money until you've eliminated all these things. Okay. So if that's the case. One of those things or a combination of those may be causing you to have a suction issue with your pool vacuum that's going to cause it to not sit stable on the bottom of the pool. Okay. Now quickly, if you have a vacuumate, a Pentair vacuumate adapter that basically allows you to take your vacuum and plug it into the skimmer, you're going to want to make sure the adjustment on the suction there is correct and play around with that. Also on the vacuumate, there's, there's, there's a plug that plugs one of the holes for the, in the skimmer, the one that goes to the floor drain, and you want to make sure that that plug hasn't come loose, okay? That's the only reason you might lose suction via the vacuumate, and make sure your vacuumate is seated in there correctly. I would suggest you watch my video on converting your pool to a vacuumate, uh, to a vacuum using a vacuumate, and I'll put a link to that in the description below as well, okay? So, if you've done all that, you probably should have enough suction. So again, if we've eliminated that it's not a suction issue, then it has to be a weight and balance issue, and that one's fairly simple to deal with. Okay, I've taken my client's vacuum out of the pool. Obviously, the system's not running, so we're not risking it damaging the, the system. But when you got your G3, it came with a couple things. All right, obviously, the, 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 the whole vacuum, the blue fin disc, the foot pad, and this little thing here, which is basically a step guard. And sometimes a, a, a vacuum can get stuck at the steps, and this kind of can help prevent that from happening. Now, I've also seen it when these have been used, it actually makes it stick on the on the at a corner. So you got to kind of play with that. Sometimes you need it, but if your vacuum's getting around the pool fine, you may not need this. Or if you've put it on and your vacuum's getting around the pool fine, don't change it. All right. Okay. So it also comes with one or two of these. This is a hose weight. Okay. And it clips onto the hose like so. See that right there. Okay. Now, typically the requirement or the recommendation of the manufacturer is to put it one and a half hose lengths away from where it connects to the vacuum. You see that? And that should help it to sit flat. Now, if your vacuum is sitting like this in the pool, okay, if it's like this, see how it's up this way, then that hose weight will help bring it back down. If it is tilted this way, it's a very good possibility that you don't need that hose weight and you should take it off and that will help it seat, seat more. Again, this is again considering that you have the suction correct, okay? Now, it could be a combination of the weight to the suction to find that perfect spot, okay? That's kind of that sweet spot. I have one vacuum that's constantly getting stuck. I've had to use like three of these way up the hose over here in order to prevent the hose from getting caught in the corner of the pool and now it moves perfectly. Okay, so you have to play around with that weight and figure out where it's going to best work if your vacuum is not sitting flush, right? If it's sitting where the back of it, this part here, is too up, like I have to turn it, okay, is like this, okay, as opposed to flat. And again, if it's this way, you either have a suction issue or you've got too much weight on the hose. But that's pretty much it. I'm gonna throw this back in, okay? So, you're gonna to wanna to play around with your weights and your suction and, and find out that sweet spot where it works best, and that's pretty much it. So I just wanted to give you a peek at the vacuum as it works with the proper weight balance, one and a half hose lengths away from the vacuum. This is pretty much ideal the proper amount of suction, and that vacuum sits flush. The whole blue fin disc is flush on the bottom of the pool, and it gets around the pool and does its job. So I just wanted you to see what it should look like, okay? All right, I hope that helps. So gang, there you have it. That is my video on how to adjust the balance and suction of your Barracuda G3 or G G2 pool vacuum. I hope it made sense. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to put them in the comment section below. Um, also to let you know, I do my best to answer comments and emails, but I've been inundated so much since the growth of my channel that it's very hard for me to get to those. So I'll do my best to do that. But if you want complete direct access to me, you might wanna check out my new membership um, program. 
It's a website, it's called poolschooler.com. I'm gonna put the address below here, it's poolschooler.com. It will also be in the description below this video. Again, that is something that allows you to have direct access to me, so you know I'm gonna get back to you uh, quickly. And it has a lot of extra things that are exclusive to that membership program. So check it out. Again, it's poolschooler.com. All righty. I want to thank you again for watching. You remember to like, subscribe, and share. And as always, have fun, be safe, and always watch those kids and elderly folk and pets around water. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.